don't go away. If you think you know about recalls, you don't know Jack. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. Today we're still working with Jack, the St. Bernard Mix, and this is his fifth episode and his final episode. Today we're going to concentrate on recalls, but I want to go back a little bit and just review all the behaviors that you've seen in the previous episodes with Jack have all been taught within a four-week time span. So it's really important to realize that in a short period of time, you can accomplish a great deal with your dog. So don't give up, be consistent and train on a daily basis. Train when you feed your dog, train every time you interact with your dog and you'll have a much better companion. I wanna introduce a friend and colleague, Kim Welch is here joining us today. Kim owns Kim's Canine Companion, a dog walking and training business here in Keene, Swansea area. And she's gonna help us with recalls. So a recall is come when called, and it is one of the, I would say, one of the top behaviors mm -hmm. that owners want their dogs to learn and that we need our dogs to learn. It's um, safety so that we can call them back to us away from anything that might be dangerous. Um, it allows them more freedom. You can take them out for walks on the rail trail, mm -hmm. around the um, you know, the pond, the goose pond or various places, and, and if you feel confident that your dog will come back to you, Again, the dog has a better quality of life. They can get mm. more daily stimulation and just have uh, have a better time. And, and I know that as an owner, you're not going to be, oh, my God, oh, my God, my dog won't come back to me, won't come back to me. So the way that I teach recalls, and if you've been watching the show, you've seen in a previous episode, I did associate Jack with the whistle, where I blew the whistle and I gave him a high-value food item like liverwurst. So the whistle starts to predict the liverwurst. Now, we can change the recall from a whistle to a word. That's not a problem. But for today, we're going to stay with his name and with the whistle. And the reason I like the whistle, particularly when I'm training somebody else's dog, is it's very clear and consistent. And it's not dependent on how I say Jack or Jack or <laughs> anything. It's, it's clear whether you're, you're using it, I'm using it, or somebody else is using it. So that's one reason for the whistle. And the other thing I do with recalls and we're going to show you how we start this in a very basic fashion in the house and then we're going to take it outside because it is a nice sunny day thankfully here in New Hampshire today. Um, I play hide and seek with the dog and the purpose of hide and seek is so that when you call your dog they are actually trained to follow your voice. So if you are hiking with your dog or you're out in the woods and you lose sight of them and your dog has had enough practice with this they will learn to continue to follow your voice. So you can say, you know, you can say, Fluffy, come, come, come on, Fluffy. You can keep calling them, keep calling them so that they will keep tracking, tracking your voice. Um, and it's, it's a, you know, you can treat, teach them to sniff you out if you want to as well, but mm -hmm. it's much easier to, to do this, mm -hmm. um, to do it this way. I'd like to take just a moment to point out how nicely Jack is lying here. We've got a guest in the house. He's not barking at the windows. He's really become a very nice family companion. The little bit of English that he knows is enough to make him be a part of the family in a, in a very pleasurable way. So let's just take a quick peek back at some of the unruly behaviors Jack had when he first arrived at the house. So the first thing I want to just tell you about is Jack, you can notice, is wearing what we call a belly band. So some male dogs, when they first come into the house, I think by... <coughs> Jack! Here's one of his issues. Jack! Good boy! Um, that they often will do some marking in the house. So the belly band protects my belongings, and if he is going to lift his leg to mark, it's going to stay in the belly band, which is a little... Um, we hope it's a little adversive to the dog. About two weeks of that and the marking should be stopped. So if you have a male dog that for any reason is going to the bathroom peeing in your house, then you need to get yourselves a belly band. Remember, dogs are always learning. Jack, are you, you're barking at your reflection. Come over here. 
ultimately, when he's outside and he's a little more arousal, this is a very exciting toy for him. So, I'll just... Sometimes, when you are trying to get rid of a behavior, you're going to have to prevent the behavior from happening. And so, right now, I don't want him standing, learning to bark at the window, and I risk every time I call him away and come back to me that he's learning, oh, bark at the window, and then Denise calls me back and I get something. So we're going to try to just end it at the moment. Okay. <laughs> the next thing that uh, I'd like to do So because he's barking and looking over at me, we're just going to go get him. Come on, you can tug. You can tug. Get it. Uh, the other, so we'll switch gears since he's jumping on me. And all I'm going to do is hold his feet for a little bit. I'm not squeezing them. Ah, ah, ah. Of course, he can't bite my hands either. Ah. Until he's ah, a little uncomfortable, but not biting me. Stop. So, okay. Um, so what we're going to do with Jack, we still have the high value food items, which we will be using. And when we go outside, we're also going to use toys. So we're going to sort of hide the toys so that he doesn't know we have them. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a big surprise when he gets to Kim and he plays tug, when he gets to me and he gets to play um, with this big ball that he really likes. And the other thing is once your dog is fluid, right, and he is because we've been doing this for a while now, really coming just boom, the dog is coming at you. Then you need to switch your reinforcement schedule to a variable reinforcement. Right. And you and I were talking about this when mm. you first came in this morning that it's, it's even hard for me to do. That's the science says to do that. It's just like any other behavior, yeah. but <laughs> I always feel so compelled. Oh, he came. I need to heavily reinforce him. But remember, you want to be um, interesting. Mm -hmm. And the best way to be interesting is to vary when you reinforce and what you reinforce with. Right. So there may be we're just a time when we pat him and say, what a good boy, and then the next person will call him. Okay, so let's get started. So um, when you do this in your house, it does work best with two people. And Jack is very much attached to me, so I can't do this in the house without a helper because he follows me around wherever I go and he's jumping over gates to get to me. So clearly that's not going to work. This is a great game to play with kids. If any of you have kids at home, they love playing hide and seek with dogs. Give them a big handful of the dog's dinner. You can play hide and seek with the dog's meal so that you're not, oh, trying to carve out another 15, 20 minutes in your day to train the dog. Play hide and seek and feed the dog at the same time, and then you're done. Okay, so what I'm going to have Kim do is she's just going to sort of hang on to him. Actually, you're going to have to hold on to his collar because okay. he'll probably follow me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to walk away and go straight down my hall, and I'm going to call him to me, and he should be, he'll probably try to follow me as I go. When he gets there, what I'm going to do, and I've been doing this, I'm going to collar grab him. So I'm going to say, gotcha, grab his collar, and he's going to get some treats. And then that is a separate piece to the recall that you can all do. If you're just sitting around with your dog, have a handful, not one, not just, this is a, this is a dime. You need a handful of high value food. So when you say, gotcha, he's like, what? Oh, who cares? I just got $500. <laughs> because there will come a time when your dog gets away from you outside. And what are you going to do? You're going to grab him as soon as you can. You're going to say, gotcha. And then he's like, what? Oh, I don't care because I've already been conditioned that when somebody grabs my collar, great stuff comes my way. So you go ahead and hang on to him. I'm going to leave that with you. Here. Can you stand? Come. Good boy. Yes. I'm going to Good grab job. So when you first get ready to play hide and seek, your dog needs to see you. You can't hide too challengingly right from the beginning. If you remember when you were a kid and somebody hid really, really well, you gave up after a while. You need to build your dog up to this searching process. So I'm going to walk down to the end of the hall. Jack will be able to see me as soon as he comes around the corner. You should always squat down when you're first starting to train this because it makes you more interesting. And I'm going to call him just using his name. Jack! Jack! Hey! 
good boy. It's a collar grab. <laughs> good boy. And then he gets a nice big handful of stuff. Good boy. Okay, and now Kim's gonna call him back. And not only is he gonna have to leave me, he's gonna have to leave the other treats in my hand as well. So whenever you're ready. Jack! Jack! Use the whistle. Good. Good boy! Gotcha. Good. Good job. She's gonna hang on Good to job. him. And now I'm just gonna step in this room here and keep my head out so you can see me for just a minute. And now he has to start to figure out where I am in which of these rooms. Jack! Yay! Good boy! That's a good boy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now Kim's going to change her hiding place. Oh, don't look. Oh, I can't look to see where she's going. No cheating. No cheating. Jack! Whistle. Hi, good boy. Gotcha. Good. good job. Yes, good boy. Good boy. So we did that one, we did that four times. You could easily accomplish a feeding in that short period of time. The dog could receive their dinner and they had some fun and you got some beginning recalls in there. Now we're gonna make it a little bit harder for Jack and I'm gonna actually go downstairs and hide in the family room while Kim distracts him up here and that's gonna be a whole nother level. He's ready for that. But again, be sure at home that you're taking your time and you're doing this over the course of days. Jack! Jack! Yay! What a good boy! That's a good boy. You were looking for me. Good boy! Never be afraid to give your dog too much love and attention. Good boy. Yes, that's a very good boy. Good boy. All right. Good. Okay, so next, let's go outside and show you how to do this in the big bad world. Ready, Jack? <laughs> okay, so now we're outside. Jack is on a either 15 or 20 foot long line and that's for safety. In the event that he does not come to us when called, we do not need to get up close to grab his collar. We only need to be 15 or 20 feet from him to grab him and get back, <coughs> get our control back. So Jack is raring to go. He loves being outside. <laughs> and he's not wearing his gentle leader like you've seen in other episodes. He doesn't need it for the recalls, but it makes it a little challenging to hang on to him. So I'm gonna give him to Kim. Here, buddy. She's Come just going to take him over there, and I'm going to go on. hide in the woods. Here we go. Good boy. All right. Okay, so I'm going to call Jack. I'm also going to use the whistle, and you're, you'll probably hear me call him more than once because, again, I'm teaching him to follow my voice and to follow the whistle, and I'm going to try to spy on him. So you might be able to see me, but um, I don't want him to see me because I want him to follow my voice. Okay, so here we go. Jack! Jack! There he is! Good boy! Yay! Jack, good boy! So I'm going to grab his collar. Jack! <laughs> He's looking. So here's why we use the long line. Good boy. So I can get him back. Good boy! Grab his collar. There. Good boy. Good boy. Now I'm just going to hang on to him. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to let him get do whatever he wants, and when Kim's ready, she'll call him, and she's hiding. <laughs> Jack! <whistles> Jack! You can see the whistle. Good boy, really Jack! job look what I got <gasps> look at that oh good boy what a good dog schedule. yes good boy okay, a good boy voice. Jack yes good boy. good boy okay out Kim let walk around just let him go <laughs> so he's already on his way he clearly knows the game and I'm gonna throw him ball Jack boy because he loves that. That's his, instead of roast beef or liverwurst. <laughs> Good boy. So 
so that's variable reinforcement that instead of giving him food, he got that toy. Let's see if we can get him to come out of the woods with it. Oh. I know, I know. That is special. Okay, ready? Ready? <laughs> so I want to let him play with it for a little bit. I don't want to take it away. I can kick it and interact with him. Oop, it's buried. Get it. There you go, get it. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. Okay, ready? This is very high value to Jack. He loves this. Okay, ready? Wait. Oh. Okay, you gotta stop. Jack, leave it. Jack? <laughs> leave it so I can get it, please. Maybe now I can get the ball away from him. All right, let's do. So Jack was surprised by the game of tug, and he was surprised by this ball, which is great. So he has no idea what he'll get when he comes to us, but he knows it's going to be fantastic. First time I gave him liverwurst, then I surprised him with this. Let your dog play with it for a little while. Can't be too short. And don't call him to you and then take the thing away. That will undo your recall because it's going to be considered negative from the dog's point of view. So I'd like to up the ante a little bit with Jack and make it a little more challenging by taking him out front and he'll have to find me in the back area. And we're going to keep the line on him, but I'm going to let Kim just let him sort of mosey around the street, go up and down the snow banks if she wants. If while we're getting set up you need to, you're just gonna call him back to you. Okay. And the whistle is clearly much stronger still than his name, but his name, anytime you wanna change a command, it's the new command followed by the old command. So his old command is the whistle, and the new one is his name. So he's still making that association. So the whistle's, again, crystal clear. First time you, mm. did you see him the first time you blew yeah. it? He was like, like yeah. a rocket <laughs> over to you. <laughs> Leaping through the snow made no difference to him. Okay, so let's get set up for the next one and we're gonna go out front. Oh. Come on, Jack. So while Denise has gone to hide, I'm just gonna play a little game of find it with Jack to keep him occupied. Jack, find it, Jack. Oh, good boy, find it. Yeah. Hey, Jack, find it. Find it. Good job, buddy. Find it. Jack! <whistles> Jack, come on! Good boy! There he is! Ready? Ready? Go get it! <laughs> Good boy! <laughs> On today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, we showed you how to teach your dog a recall, which is coming when called. We use the whistle. The first step is in your house, blow the whistle, present the dog with liverwurst, roast beef, a huge amount of a high value item to really make an impression that that whistle is a predictor of something really great. Then we did some hide and seek in the house, down the hall, stepping into a bedroom, then down the stairs so that the dog is learning to follow your voice. Don't be afraid to say your recall word more than once, to really encourage your dog to come into you, blow the whistle more than once. He has to know where you are and sometimes you'll see the dog stop, listen for it again, and then come back in and find you again. Then we've taken it outside and we showed you how you can hide in your own yard, behind trees, sheds, calling from the road to the back, and really have a very nice recall 
We showed you how to vary your reinforcements. That means we use treats, we use a game of tug, and we use Jack's favorite toy that he's playing with now. So make yourself interesting and make yourself unpredictable and you'll have a great recall. I look forward to seeing you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years.